Well, the latest read of inflation so showed that it was picking back up in this country. The last time that happened, the Bank of Canada quickly moved off the sidelines and resumed its rate hiking campaign. What will happen this time? Let's bring in a former insider at the Bank of Canada for some perspective as to how they think about these things. We've got Paul Beaudry, former deputy governor at the Bank of Canada, and he joins me now. Paul, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, inflation obviously still very much front and center as it looks like it's perking back up again. You throw in rising energy prices, this is also a concern, but the core number has also been stubborn. How should people be thinking about this uh, from, well, from a policy all, I think, perspective? Uh, Go ahead. Uh, first, I think should look through some of the headline numbers. Obviously the headline numbers are really influenced by the oil price. And that is a factor overall, but looking at things is really much more of these core measures. It's trying to understand the momentum uh, that's in the background of inflation and looking at a broad range of uh, indicators as the inflation part. And there we really do see stickiness, and that's really more the issue. And this is getting that issue of kind of higher for longer type aspects that is coming out. Uh, so really looking, it's going to need over the, uh, the next while to see some of those uh, core numbers, kind of those more broad based uh, aspects of inflation to come down before we see any, uh, any aspects of interest rates coming down. Or on the flip side, if they don't come down, that really brings a danger that maybe uh, there is at a point where the, the bank handle will need to tighten more to bring those down. So that's really the aspect of kind of a little bit uh, looking past that headline and looking at more of those uh, underlying numbers. That includes really when looking at core inflation, looking at some of the measures that the Bank of Canada follows in terms of expectations of inflation, especially uh, business expectations, they're setting prices, that gives a good idea of how some of that process, some of the wage settlements, all those things are really the more fundamental things that have to come down to bring that inflation back to 2%. It sounds like what you're saying where we are right now is we can afford to wait and see given where interest rates are versus needing to react again, at least in the near term with a ri with another rate hike? Well, again, here, when we're looking at the overall uh, performance of the Canadian economy, we're really seeing an important slowdown. You know, we're very close to zero growth, depending on how things kind of are moving. Uh, so we are getting that slowdown that the Bank of Canada was looking for just to cool down to get back the, the economy more in balance between this demand and supply. That's kind of coming in. It might even kind of uh, continue for a while. So I think the Bank of Canada kind of recognizes that, that the economy has cooled and really wants to see that process, those forces kind of in the background, slowing that overall momentum in inflation. So there's that aspect of staying the, the course there. But there is this message of kind of saying in the background there are risks and these core measures are high. So it's really that, that balance between looking at how much there's the economy slowing down and what's happening to those core measures. And the Bank of Canada kind of has some time, wants to look, you know, give the economy some time to adjust uh, again to a lot of those uh, past increases before taking a uh, overly rushed decision. Paul, you know better than I that there's all kinds of ways to torture the inflation data to tell a story that you want to tell. One of the things that uh, some people do to say we're at the point, we're sufficiently restrictive, maybe we should even be cutting, is look at the mortgage costs and how much that is feeding into inflation and say, well, if you strip those out, the Bank of Canada's own actions, we're there already. Uh, I think that's a very narrow way of looking at it. So uh, what the, you know, a lot of the, uh, the good way is really looking at a lot of indices. That's like one part. That would be like kind of looking at a cancer patient and looking at the side effects of kind of doing a cancer treatment and deciding that's the way you're going to judge if the person should continue on the treatment. That's a part in the overall story, but I think it's a very kind of narrow cut. Looking at these more of these momentum type aspects in the background is a much, uh, much more telling. Obviously, the, uh, the mortgage part is part of that overall story. That's something that has to be taken into account and understanding that. But you can strip those aspects out and kind of really get uh, some, uh, some feelings in the background. And still, there's quite a bit of momentum in that in the inflation numbers in Canada. How does the bank think about the housing market, the absolute resiliency, even in the face of these incredible rise in interest rate hikes? I mean, it's, it's been a Teflon market because of things that are, quite frankly, out of the bank's control. 
Well, there, I think there's uh, many things that are happening in the housing market. And there's, like you say, there's real tensions. We know it uh, directly. There's, you know, there's different parts that affect the, uh, the price of housing and how resilient it's been. But looking forward, I think we really get into where the interest rates are going to go, kind of looking more a year and a half, two years, three years out from here. Not only this, this episode of getting inflation back, but where do, do interest rates go in that uh, long longer term trend. Prior to COVID, they were very low. If we get back to that, that can, can kind of support the housing market. But there's a lot of reasons to believe maybe those longer term, uh, longer term view of interest rates stay higher. And then it becomes much, uh, much more difficult to kind of support these valuations. So right now, I think that's a market that's trying to figure out uh, where those interest rates, those longer rates are going to go. And again, if they go back to kind of pre COVID levels, you can kind of justify part of the current prices with the very tight rental market, different parts. But if those uh, interest rates looking forward, uh, kind of one, two, three years to really stay higher, then uh, it's much harder for kind of justifying these valuations. How is the central bank going to think about energy prices? Are they going to look through it? Um, is it only going to be a problem when it starts to feed into other components of uh, CPI? Yeah, it's very much what you said there. So there's a, a, a natural aspect of uh, kind of you know, not uh, completely looking through uh, oil price changes, but really understanding that, you know, what's the real danger is the psychology of inflation is getting kind of an idea that inflation is running and keeping on running. And this is, you know, whether it's businesses, whether it's individuals, when it's only one price kind of moving around like energy, people understand that's not a whole inflation process. And the Bank of Canada kind of you know, kind of keeps an eye on that and tries to see that that's not what's driving things. Is when it really gets broad based. So if that kind of starts feeding into other things and other shocks kind of start arriving, such that we have a broad based inflation, and that's really what you kind of worry about. So as long as it stays only in kind of oil prices, uh, that can be looked through. But once it gets broad based, it really has to be taken into account. Is fiscal stimulus um, and and fiscal policy complicating the job of getting inflation back down to target? I think it's a, a rather small part in the overall uh, picture here. It's not like saying there's nothing, but in general, what we're seeing in Canada is, yeah, there's been like, if we look back at, you know, uh, fiscal spending that was kind of supporting COVID, that was a big part that kind of got people back into jobs and kind of helping the economy come out of that part. But since then, you know, there's different parts. You could have a bit more help from the, uh, the fiscal side, but overall, Fiscal growth is kind of growing at the speed of growth of the economy. So it's not either the, the force that's causing uh, the issue or uh, helping it. It's kind of neutral at this point. The uh, broad consensus is that with all of these rate increases, the central banks are going to be able to pull off a very difficult thing, which is a, a soft landing in which you can get inflation down without a huge expense to the economy in the form of a major contraction, a big credit accident uh, or, or, or massive job losses. Are you in that camp? Well, I'd say I'm in that camp like two thirds. So I think that is the most uh, kind of plausible scenario at this point. A lot of things are pointing to that, but I'd only say that's like a 60, 70% chance somewhere around there of kind of that might be happening, but that still puts like kind of 30, 40% chance and it doesn't fall all the kind of the, the right way there. So we have to kind of keep an eye on that other risk. So that's kind of the good scenario. And a lot of things are kind of suggesting where, you know, especially in the, the American economy is still being very robust in different things. A lot of prices are kind of coming down slowly there, but in the, in the right direction. Hopefully that kind of maps back into kind of getting those core measures in Canada. So there is this part of really uh, hitting this soft landing. I think it's a it's a plausible scenario. It's more as the most likely one, but not to oversell it either. There's a like a 30, 40 percent chance that things don't turn out as uh, as perfect as that. Uh, and like you said, there's kind of a few reasons there in the background. In particular, it could be that inflation gets stuck at this higher level that stops kind of coming down uh, right now, exactly those core measures. And that would really create an important challenge uh, to especially the Bank of Canada when the economy is already kind of looking more balanced in terms of uh, demand and supply, but inflation doesn't come back down. If we kind of fall in that, that would might might require more interest rate increases and it's a really difficult situation. Then you're really kind of pushing the economy into recession to get that. So 
Uh, keep that in mind. And that also means like for financial institutions, uh, different things when we look at, you know, the, the aspects we've seen before, if uh, the U.S. doesn't manage uh, this, um, this aspect also, they might decide to increase later on mm. uh, going forward. And again, we know there's certain parts of the banking system that have uh, had difficulty adjusting some of those interest rate increases. So that should, could still be there. So again, I think there is a good chance of this uh, soft landing scenario, but uh, keep protecting yourself on the other side just in case it doesn't happen.